So at last here we have my new rings and spokes uh, for the bike. So let's get this box open, it's just arrived, and see what's inside. We have here my rims. And in here we have the uh, stainless steel spoke sets and the nipples. These actually are straight, so that makes life a lot easier when it comes to uh, building up the wheels. Right, let's get cracking then, and I can get these wheels assembled. So here's the hub then, it's uh, been blasted and etched primed and primed and uh, painted in an aluminium silver paint. I'm not sure how long this finish will last for, but it's certainly better than leaving it as raw aluminium. Yeah, I've got two sets of spokes here. Uh, that one's for the front and that one's for the back. I know that because this one's got long spokes and shorter spokes, so that must be for the back. Now I'm hoping that this uh, particular wheel should be quite easy to, to uh, assemble because it's got straight spokes and so there's, there's no debate about where the spokes will go. It's a lot easier than using the traditional um, J-shaped spokes where they could be angled at any old angle uh, and it's up to you to work out where they should go. The only thing to uh, remember is that we should always lace up the wheel with the inner spokes first. So as you can see here, we've got um, inners and outers. So I need to thread the inners first and then the outers. Now lacing a wheel for the first time can seem quite daunting, but if you keep in mind a couple of points then it's not that bad. And the first point is whether you've got a 36 uh, hole rim or a 40 hole rim, the nipples all go in a series of fours. So it's four, 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 and it repeats all the way around. And those four are two that go this side and two that go that side. And of those two, one comes this way and one comes this way. So what I'm trying to show you here is these four nipples are in a pattern uh, whereby two go, whereby two go to the left and two go to the right, um, alternating of course. And of those, one goes this way and one goes this way. Now that pattern is repeated all the way around the rim. So all you've got to do when you first start is get the first one right and then just follow the pattern all the way around and you should be fine. So what I'm looking for is of these four, which is the appropriate hole to put this spoke into. It's not that one because that's pointing the wrong way. That's pointing this way. Um, that one is pointing this way, so it's maybe not that one. That one is pointing down again. But this one here, oops, but it looks like to me, this one here is the one I need. So hopefully all I've got to do is just connect that together. I'll just do it by hand like that. Keep everything nice and loose. And there's my first spoke done. But what I'm gonna do now is do all the inners first, and then do the outers. Now, if this was a conventional hub uh, with J-shaped spokes, you couldn't do that because sometimes with a spoke, you've got to put it this way before it can bend up and get level with the rim. And that's fine when you're doing the first few, but when you get round to the very end, you'll find that you can't actually turn the spokes back because the other spokes get in the way, which is very, very frustrating if it's something you've not realised. And to get round that problem, what you have to do is actually thread all the spokes in first before you start to connect um, the spokes to the rim. And again, that's a bit fiddly. It's not difficult, but it's very fiddly. And you run the risk of scratching the rim with the edges of these threaded spokes. So that's something to bear in mind. But luckily today, this hub is actually very simple. So let's get cracking. And I'm going to do all the inners first. Then I'm going to do all the outers. Then I'll turn it round and do the rest. Okay, well that didn't take long. I've just done um, whatever it is, the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on this side. And now I'm going to do the rest of them, which go this way rather than that way. And so far, it's been very straightforward. That took me a few minutes, no more. And now I'm going to carry on and do the rest on this side. Uh, and then flip it over and do the same on the other side. So this is the last one on this side. Just got to finish that one off. Pushing through. I'm not trying to get any kind of tension right or whatever. I'm just getting them assembled. And I'll worry about the tension later on when I chew up the wheel. So now what I've got to do is flip it over. Gently, and do the same thing on this side. And there's the hub finished. Um, I've got the spacer inside, mustn't forget that. And I've also fitted new bearings as well. I did that a while ago. Um, the old bearings didn't look too bad, but when you're rebuilding a wheel, the cost of a bearing means you may as well change it just in case. And now with the hub reassembled, I can get this wheel on my homemade uh, wheel stand and get the wheel trued up. So let's do that next.